And as you feel your eyes relax back into the sockets, just very gently move your eyes to the left and to the right. And you can keep your eyelids closed as you do this. And after you've done about six to eight of the side to side eye movement, let your eyes come back to center. Release the jaw again. And then let your eyes look to the upper lid and the lower lid. So you're just looking to, up to the upper lid, down to the lower it lid. About six to eight times. And then let your eyes come back to center. Exhale out the mouth. And then we're gonna circle the eyes to the right six to eight times. And then once you've circled, the right six to eight times. Let your eyes come back to center. Release your jaw again. And we'll do the same thing left or go to the opposite side. And then let your eyes come back to center. Feel your lower jaw release from the upper jaw. And just notice. And you could just stay here, focusing on that audible exhale, inviting any energy that might be wanting to rise up to the head. Just bring it down to the feet, down to the earth. And then we can start to bring those arm circles in with the elbows extended or slightly bent, circling those arms a few times, one direction. You could pause or just go right into reversing. Feel how that block can be a massage tool for your upper back if you are circling your arms. Let your arms come back to stillness. And then we're going to think about lifting our hips up from that first block, that lower block. So bending the knees, letting the feet come flat if you extended the legs. Lift the pelvis up, slide that block out, and as you lower your pelvis down, start to roll to one side, whatever side feels best for you into that fetal position. Just feel that side of the body that's close to the earth. With each exhale, relax down a little bit more. And if you've got that block behind your upper back, go ahead and remove it, set it to the side, and we're gonna just roll to the opposite side. So let the top leg lead, let the bottom leg follow, and we'll go to fetal position, opposite side. If it feels comfortable, keep that support underneath your head. All right, and then when you're ready, go ahead and press your palms down, reach your hips to the ground, and slowly stacking one vertebra at a time. Let your head come up last. Okay, let's come to Sukhasana. Come into a comfortable seated position. You could sit on a prop. You might bring your blocks in if you want extra support for your lower back and your knees. So just coming into a a comfortable seated position 
The blocks could be on the first level or they could be on the second level, whatever feels most comfortable. And then we can just start to move our spine forward and back. And at any time with the legs crossed, if you need to switch the leg that's in front, feel free to do that. But as you start to move your spine forward and back, connect, I invite you to connect to the element of water. So fluidity, nourishing, and your breath. So as we start to bring more movement in, still allowing those eyes to relax back into the sockets. Okay, you could stay with this forward and back movement if you'd like, or we'll start to spiral around just one direction, whatever direction your intuition guided you towards. Just follow that, exhaling back and inhaling forward. Four, six, or eight, try to keep it even, and then you'll reverse going the opposite direction. Exhale back, inhale forward. And then when you're even with that, let your spine come to center. If you want to switch the leg that's in front, switch it. We'll go into some neck release next. Palms can face up or down. Some yogis say that when our palms face up, we're just in that open to receiving energy, um, or we have an abundant amount of energy to release. Grounding, palms down, maybe we're conserving that energy. All right, let's bow our chin to our chest and wrap the left forearm over the head and gently draw your head to the left. Feel your shoulders slide down from your ears and feel your spine lift out of your pelvis. Feel your shoulder blades draw into the spine. And we can move the focus to the ceiling and down to the earth. Very gentle side to side motion. Pause when you find a new stretch. And as you're moving the head, you could bring in releasing the jaw or moving the eyes. Just scanning the face, the skull, the muscles, the bones. Exhaling out any tension there. And then we can bring that left hand to the left side of the head and slowly bring the head up, slide the left hand down. Let's bow our chin to our chest to go to the second side, right forearm over the top of the head, draw your head to the right. Feel your shoulder blades slide down from the ears and then in towards the spine. And maybe start moving the head, chin to the sky, chin to the earth. Pause, breathe into any new stretch. And of course you could bring in open and closing the jaw, or moving the eyes in the sockets. All right, and then let's bring the right side of the hand, right hand to the right side of the head and slowly bring the head to center, release. Palms down or up, you could just sit here, notice any shifts, or maybe you wanna to continue to move the head, moving the head side to side. Bring it back to center, ear to shoulder. Still checking that the jaw and the eyes are soft, you bring your head back to center, not in a yes motion, or you might wanna do a couple full head rolls. Inhaling up, exhaling down. In time to reverse. I just move a little slower if any area is feeling stuck. Okay, once your chin comes back to your chest, if you are rolling the head, bring your palms together, bring your thumbs to your forehead, lift your head up and 
We'll all just meet with the head back on the horizon. And slowly release those hands down. Okay, let's slide off of those blocks. Let's go into, uh, yeah, let's go into Supta Baddha Konasana next. Um, if you have a strap to use, feel free to bring it in. If you have a blanket to use or an extra pillow, you might bring it to the back of the bolster. You could try fold that blanket at the back of the bolster, folding it three times if you'd like. And then the strap, Uh, go ahead and grab that strap, make that big loop so you can place that loop around you, around your body. And then sit in front of that pillow and extra support for the knees like you might have had for when we were just seated. You might bring the blocks on the first or second level right underneath the knees. And then once you have that loop around your body, take that loop, make sure it's long enough that you can place it around the pinky side of your feet. And then just letting that strap slide down to pretty much where your pant line might be or where the edge of your pelvis is. So we'll just start to use the strap to kind of pull down from that space. We want to make sure that the strap feels snug, but not too tight that your feet fly off the ground when you recline back. And again, it's your choice how it feels if you want to use those blocks underneath the outer knees or not. And so we'll set up this posture like we did for double block bridge. First, just notice where the props are connecting to the body. And invite your breath. Guide your breath to those areas where your body is connected to the props. Invite back that audible exhale. So anything wanting to rise up near the mind or Rise up, just exhale, just allow it, any excess energy to go down towards the feet, down towards the earth. And you could do that audible exhale. To calm the nervous system, like you're fogging up the ceiling or fogging up the space around you with your breath. Invite as you breathe your skin layer to soften. Invite the muscle layer to soften. You could even say, I invite my muscles to soften or muscle layer to soften. And I invite my bones, inviting the bones to soften or surrender to gravity. And invite the organs to soften. 
surrender to gravity. And invite the cells to surrender to gravity. You know, either keeping your arms out to the side or we'll connect to the diaphragm. You could bring your hands over your belly, just upper belly near the rib cage. Let's focus on breathing there, first feeling the rise on the inhale. Feeling how the diaphragm receives the breath and extends down towards the feet. And invite to feel how that diaphragm can expand front, side, back, above and below. And as you're feeling the breath move through the diaphragm, could place an image of a golden sun there so see the golden sun right at your solar plexus getting brighter with each inhale each exhale and deepening that connection to your prana or your breath but seeing that sun energy calling your energy particles back to you. Or allowing the breath to dust off your solar plexus to come back to your true center. It might feel nice here to remove the blocks or you might, if the blocks are on the second level, try to lower them down, see if the hips want to open a little bit more here. If that's too much, you can always put the props where they were and then we'll add the shoulder stretch here. So if you don't want to do the shoulder stretch, just keep your arms where they are. Shoulder stretch, reach your arms overhead Biceps in your ears, let the thumbs point down, pinkies up, palms face in. And once again, we just want to feel those shoulders slide down from the ears, creating space. You could release the lower jaw from the upper jaw. Relax the eyes back into the sockets. And maybe you move your head from side to side. And if you do move the head, keeping the back of the head relaxed onto the prop. So releasing the jaw and the eyes. Come back to center if you are moving the head when you feel complete. If your arms are reaching back, slide your arms down by your sides. If it feels comfortable to squeeze the thumb pad against each finger pad on each hand, do. 
creating a little sensation there, connecting to each element and planet that is connected to the fingers. And you could move the toes, maybe feel the toes brush against each other. We're gonna start to come out of this. So you can grab that strap that's near the hips, slide your feet out of the strap as best you can. Try to keep the head down if you can. And then before we come up, if you are having using the blocks and you have them near you, just slide those blocks right underneath your sit bones and we're going to extend the legs out here for a few breaths. <clears throat> and those blocks could be so close to the sit bones that maybe your pelvis comes off the floor just to hover. Releasing pressure on the sacrum. Kind of floating in space. And then let's flex and point the feet, curling the toes up, extending the toes forward. And we can bring in ankle rotations again, nice and slow. For these ankle rotations, if you're practicing them, try to keep your heels connected to the ground. They might want to try to lift up, but as best you can, keep them anchored down. Okay, and then from here, we're going to bend our knees, walk our feet back towards our hips. Go ahead and remove those blocks if you have them there. And then roll to the fetal position once again that feels best. Just roll to that side. Let the top, uh, let one leg lead, let another leg follow. You could stay on top of that pillow or you might slide all the way off onto that arm of the side that you rolled to. Try a couple more breaths here, softening. You could even soften that skin layer, muscle, bone, organ, and cell. All right, and then let's press our palms down, reach our hips to the ground, and slowly come on up to seated. Okay, remove that strap if it's around you. And we're gonna set the we're gonna set those props to the side and grab a block. And then if you want a little extra support, uh, we'll use the block between the thighs for tabletop. If you want a little extra support for your wrists or your hands, you could roll up your mat. Maybe you roll up the mat a third. Maybe you roll it up halfway. But you could give yourself some extra support underneath the heels of the hands and let the fingers hang off. Or it could feel nice to let the fingers stay on the mat and let the heels of the hands hang off. So you can try these options if you'd like extra support for your hands today. That block go between your thighs just to help stay connected to Mula Bandha or your center line, which will support your lower back. Okay. So from here, also try what does it feel like to have the toes tucked today and what does it feel like to have the leg, the toes extended. One's probably going to feel more supportive for your back, I would do that one. Okay, squeeze the thighs in towards the block and then try to use your pelvic floor muscles and your inner thigh muscles to pull the block up, right? And if having, being on your hands still isn't feeling good. I would lower down to the forearms and maybe you bring your palms together to touch. That can work too if it gets to be too much on your hands. Okay, let's just go to some cat and cow spines. We start with cat, squeeze the thighs into the block, round the spine, lift it to the ceiling and look back at the block or your belly button. Feel your shoulder blades slide down from your ears. We'll send the hips back and reach the heart forward. Breathe in. Shoulders slide down from the ears again. Exhale, rounding, looking towards the belly button. Shoulders down from the ears. Hips back, heart forward, breathe in. And so let's do about four to eight more rounds of this cat and cow. You can take rest if you need. 
but really try to move at the pace that feels good for you today. And also give yourself permission to pause, right? If that cat spine's feeling really good, stay there. Cat, same with the cow spine. Just creating your own journey through this. When do you feel like moving? When do you feel like pausing? Okay, and then we're going to just come back to neutral and let's do that tail wag from side to side, moving those hips. You might even look over one shoulder and then the other, including the upper spine. Okay, we're going to come back to neutral and we're going to do child's pose. So go ahead and lift yourself up, remove the block. And so for child's pose today, for anything with the knees, this also could be supportive for the back. You could take that pillow and either, or excuse me, that blanket, and either make a roll, although rolling it up, depending on the thickness of your blanket. If you have a thinner blanket, I would roll it up. If you have a thicker blanket, you might just take that long side, long side and fold it over. If you have two blankets near you, you could put one underneath your shins, but offering that option the blanket uh, behind the knees but go ahead and grab your pillow and your two blocks as well unless you're using two pillows stacked today for your child's pose but we can start with one block on the second level and then one block on the third level for the child's pose to support the torso and you'll have that pillow near you when we fold so with that blanket the folded one up specifically if you're using two. Put it behind your knees. So when you squat down, we have a little more space. I'll give an option too if this still doesn't feel good for your knees today. But going into the child's pose, all right, you'll just lengthen your spine, fold forward, and you want to make sure that that top block is underneath the head. Like I pulled mine too far back, so I'm going to move it out a little bit, but as best you can, have that top block underneath your head. So, how does this feel with the blanket for everyone? Do you, can, you can give me a thumbs up or you're good? Okay, cool. All right. So, from here... Let's spread the fingers and spread the toes. And you could do that a couple of times. Spread the fingers, spread the toes, feel space. Feel your shoulders slide down from your ears. And then bring back that audible exhale. Now for child's pose today, if that diaphragm breath we did in Baddha Konasana was helpful, we'll just focus on breathing into the diaphragm again. And also connect to how that diaphragm can expand front, side, back, above and below. Creating more and more space from your center, the inside. And so that posture of complete surrender. We have that autumn equinox today, that balance of where we start to Move out of summer into autumn, which will lead us into winter. The time of the harvest. Reflecting back to anything you might have planted. 
physically, mentally, emotionally in the spring. What grew in the summer for you? And what will you harvest and take with you into the winter? Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And it's okay if there were some weeds that grew. <clears throat> Maybe you planted some seeds and nothing grew. You can continue to nourish them or just offer those things to the earth. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And then let's rotate the head to the opposite side. So you'll press your palms down, lift your torso up, look to the opposite side, slowly laying down. That opposing neck stretch. Come back to that audible exhale. And feel space between your fingers and your toes. Feel the muscles of your face softening. Your eyes, your jaw. Invite your inhale and your exhale to start at the diaphragm. And feel that expansion front, side, back, above and below as you breathe. Come back to that practice of harvesting. What are you bringing with you into the winter? What are you offering to the earth? Now you don't have to rush out of this child's pose, but if you're ready to, we're gonna slowly lift ourselves on up to seated. Bring your heart to center as you come up to seated, stacking one vertebra at a time. Try to let your head come up last and we'll remove those props in front of you. We'll Set any blanket you might have put behind you to this side. Go ahead and have a seat and extend your legs out in front of you. And we'll just shake the legs into the ground. And you could wag your tail. Okay, and then we're going to just do a few each side where we interlace our fingers. Only if this feels good. If you want to just use like thumbs up, you could totally skip this part too. But <clears throat> if you want to do the interlace the fingers around the knee and pull and just gently press the thumbs into the inner and outer thigh or you could just use your thumbs if you want to use maybe you could even put all of your five finger pads together and just kind of press along that line from your inner and outer knee 
up towards your hip and inner thigh. And once you've done just a few of those, we're going to go to the other side, same thing, either that interlacing, the fingers, pressing inner and outer thigh, just pressing the elbows down as you squeeze in to the leg. Okay, we're going to go into a Paschimottanasana from here. If you want to, if you're like finding some stuff, you want to keep <laughs> massaging your legs, you can. Otherwise, we're going to bring that pillow, it could be your blanket, underneath you. We're going to do Paschimottanasana. So, let's um, sit. Well, I'll share the most supportive variation, and then I'll go into the folds with least amount of props. So... Again, you could have those blocks underneath your hamstrings and just feel the backs of the legs supported. You'll get a little stretch here. You could also bring those blocks down to the first level. We want to feel like we felt with tabletop where we had the block between our thighs, a slight internal rotation. We can start here. Grab your strap if you need to unloop it. You could, you could just take that loop and place it around your, your soles of your feet, the ball mounds of your feet too. As we hold the strap, if you do keep the loop, you could try like we did for next stretch, palms up and pulling back or palms down and pulling back. We wanna, we wanna line our elbows up, keep our elbows in line or maybe slightly behind the rib cage. And even as we start to fold, if you are going to fold, you could walk your hands down the strap, but still with that idea as you gently pull back, trying to keep those elbows in line with the rib cage, right? And don't be concerned about getting the forehead, nose to knees or shins, but more about how does it feel in the backs of your legs? Can you keep your heels connected to the ground? Maybe you want to let the strap go completely if you're wanting to touch the feet with your hands or touch your shins with your hands. And let's just do the next few rounds of breath focusing on the diaphragm, that breathing muscle just below the rib cage. Expanding front, side, back, above, and below. Now, you could stay here. If you need to come up, go and lift your spine. If you want to try another variation, you might slide those blocks out from underneath you. You might slide off of that pillow. You could try bringing the pillow on top of you. Depending on its thickness, you could bring your ribs on top of the pillow. If your pillow is smaller, you might fold it in half. Oh, we're back. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> um, if your pillar, pillow is smaller, you might fold it in half just to give that extra support underneath the rib cage. Um, and then if you want to get something underneath your head, you could use a block. So depending how far you're wanting to go into this, and it could be nice just to hold that pillow just for that support, just to give a little squeeze on that breathing muscle. But if you want to try that block on the pillow, this could also be without the pillow and stacking your blocks on your shins. Which you could hold with your hands or depending on flexibility, they might be there for yourself. So we'll just do about three more breaths. So if you're in the original fold, you could stay folded, lift the spine when you need. Maybe you've extended the legs along the ground. more about how does it feel on your knees? How does it feel on your back? 
And then are you able to comfortably breathe in your diaphragm? Those are the three most important things to check on while you're in this fold. How does it feel in your knees? How does it feel on your lower back? And are you able to feel that breath movement in the diaphragm? Yeah. And then so from here, when you're ready, we're going to inhale, lift up the spine, and then we're going to set up for supported bridge from here. So we're going to go onto the back. So remove those props. You can feel the backs of the legs gently bouncing on the ground, okay? If you're wanting to have a support for your head, you might take that blanket and bring it behind your head. If you're not using a blanket, you could also roll up the back of your mat to lift your head up a little bit. That rolled up um, blanket or mat could also go underneath your shoulder blades. So if you enjoyed that chest opener for double block bridge, you could lay your shoulder blades on the rolled up mat or a rolled up blanket. But we're gonna come onto our back again. And how do you choose which one is best? I'd say if there's any neck pain, I would do the, the blanket underneath the head, supporting the back of the neck. Any chest or shoulder tightness, I would use that rolled up mat or blanket underneath the shoulder blades. Okay, and then we have one of your blocks near you. So just like we felt in the opening posture, double block bridge. Feel that support of the props. Maybe you have something underneath your head and shoulder blades, but you definitely feel the floor and the mat below you. don't have to rush out of this, but if you're ready to go into supported bridge, step into your feet and lift your pelvis and middle spine up and then support the back of your pelvis. Once you feel the back of your pelvis supported, you could try to walk your shoulder blades into the spine, still feeling space between shoulder blades and spine. Head relaxed on the earth. If it feels better for your knees to extend the legs out, do. Even if it's not all the way, maybe you keep the feet flat on the ground. But if you, regardless if you extend the legs out or not, imagine you still have that yoga block between the thighs like you did for tabletop. Gently bringing the thighs and the knees in. Also feel your sacrum widening back of pelvis widening. You might still have that exhale being longer than the inhale. I'd encourage now to start practicing your six count inhale, six count exhale. Inhaling the breath in for six counts. And slowly exhaling out for six counts. Just feeling how the front body opens, stretches, back body lengthens.
making that six count inhale, six count exhale to the diaphragm breath. Okay, now you're welcome to stay in bridge if it's feeling really supportive right now. If you're ready to come out, walk your feet back towards your hips, press your feet into the ground and slowly lift your pelvis up. If you wanna slowly lower yourself out of bridge, maybe you first lower down to the first block for a breath or two. If you're ready to come down all the way, just lower down, massaging out your back to the floor. All right, now we can add the windshield wiper knees. And you might, if your strap is near, you might use it. If not, don't worry about it. I'm gonna just do a little hip stretch here before optional legs up the wall, or if you'd rather do recline mountain. So kind of yogi's choice for this next posture. So, but first, next restorative posture, but first we'll do the hip stretch. So go ahead and cross your right thigh over your left. So it's like eagle legs. And then definitely can stay here. If you are only lifting your uh, legs up a little bit, maybe you put a block underneath your left foot. You could try floating your left foot off the mat and grabbing your right ankle with your left hand. If that's feeling good, see if you can lift your left foot off the mat all the way Grab your left foot with your right hand. Now, if you have both feet, try to pull your feet to the outer edges of the mat or pull your heels down towards your hips. One's gonna probably feel like more of a stretch in your right hip or right piriformis. And of course, if there's any pain that you can't comfortably breathe into, you just wanna do a little bit less. Once you've done about eight to 10 breaths, exhale, release your left foot if you lifted it, go ahead and cross your right foot. If you are using a block, you could move that block underneath the right sole of foot. And then we can cross the left leg over the right. Okay, and then you could try to grab your left foot with your right hand. Try to grab your right foot with your left hand. Again, trying to stretch your feet to the outer edges or pull your heels down to your hips. Of course, doing less if there's pain. And, it's not, and if it's not comfortable to breathe, in, breathe with, do less. And then when you're ready, release your right foot first, release your left and cross the legs. Okay, so roll to your fetal position of choice here next to let your knees, legs lead, rest of the body follows. We'll lift ourselves up to seated. So here's where Yogi's choice is. You'll either grab those two blocks, bring them to the back edge of the mat for recline mountain, or you'll start to move to a wall space and bring your pillow and maybe your blanket with you, especially if you're going to want to stay there for Shavasana. So, and maybe you want to spend time in both a little bit each. It's fine. But recline mountain if you're staying out in center. Place the uh, pillow underneath the legs. Shoulder blades, again, are supported by a block. Head is supported by a block.
or find that wall space and bringing your pillow up to that wall space. Anyone's going there. Yeah, so if you want to do uh, the Purita Karani, legs up the wall, and that would be the time if you're wanting to add that to your practice today. So whatever posture you're choosing to move into, let's come back to our six count breath. And this one, this posture I'll cue three rounds of six count breath for you. We'll start with a long exhale out first, exhaling out the mouth. And we'll inhale for one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale out six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale one, two, three, four five, six, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale into the diaphragm, one, two, three, four, five, six, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stay with that breath. Start to add a pause at the top of the inhale for one to two counts. You can also add that pause at the bottom of the exhale for one to two counts. We're moving into that closing part of our practice here. So maybe the asana you're in is your final resting space. But no, if you're needing to spend some time flat on the back, just whenever you feel complete with where you are, you can slowly find your way onto the back, rolling to a side, shifting the props, Finding your back. And we can invite the body to relax once more, feeling, maybe even asking, I ask or invite the skin layer of my body to soften. I ask or invite the muscle layer of my body to soften. I ask or invite the bones of my body to soften. I ask or invite the cells of my body to soften. I ask or invite all that I am not aware of to soften.
as you continue to rest here, invite in that image of a golden sun right where your diaphragm is. Each breath, invite that golden sun to get brighter and brighter. Remove the fingers and toes. If it feels okay to add those wrists and ankle rotations, try that as well. If you are rotating the ankles, just feel if you can keep the heels connected to the ground. Try to roll to the right side, fetal position. If that's comfortable, if not, go left. Relax into the floor, the earth. A couple breaths. And we'll press the palms down and slowly lift the body up to seated, comfortably seated. We'll bring the hands together in front of the heart. And one more moment here to just honor something that you planted in the spring. something that grew, something that happened. Maybe it was something you planted that you didn't even realize you planted and it showed up as a gift, as a surprise. And thank all things that maybe showed up to give us an opportunity to grow ourselves. And just honor any lessons that have been learned offering gratitude to the sun as we start to step in towards towards the fall, the autumn, and then to winter. Where we'll start to see less daylight, but knowing that the sun is always in the sky. And we practice that practice of intuition. We can connect to it. We can see it. We can visualize it within us and around us always. And thank you for sharing your practice the equinox. Namaste. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks very much. I'm good. How are you feeling? Good. Better? <laughs> Oh. Um, I have to get going. I have patio visit people who got here early. Oh, okay. Cool. So I have to uh, get shoes on and go downstairs. But thank you. This was good. Absolutely. I'm glad to see both of you. I hope your dad's okay. Thank you. Enjoy your patio. <laughs> thank you. Cindy, nice. thank you. This was great. Yeah, it felt good. Yeah, Lynn, keep us posted. Alrighty. Thank yeah. You. I'm going to I'm going to say what you told me. Just go. No, you know, I was going to do that. Then, bye Jen. Bye. Bye Jen. Then the more I thought about it, Cindy, the more I just got nervous. I like I don't know. I get claustrophobic like on planes as it is. So sitting there with a mask on for, you know, 4 hours and then at the airport and I I just yeah. Plus, until he gets more settled, because he has OT, BT, a caregiver that comes in in the afternoon, you know, and it's like, that's just, he says he's exhausted because he just wants to sleep, so. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I mean, right now, FaceTiming is probably just as good. Um, yeah, you have that, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm still waiting to see if I can go see my mom before the before the end of summer. But well, we're not in summer anymore. But 